Hello. Obviously, I use a computer, I use a keyboard, and for a long time, my preferred keyboard has been an IBM Model M. And this dates back to when they really were IBM Model Ms. They came out for the original IBM PC, and uh, they were a very nice keyboard. I was very pleased to realize decades ago that they'd sold the rights to Unicomp, who make a keyboard that is exactly the same as the old IBM Model M. Um, it's called a buckling spring keyboard. And uh, give me a pen knife out here. I should be able to extract a key and show you what that means. So the key tops come off. And in the actual key is a spring. Hopefully you can see that. And uh, as you press the key, the spring goes down, it gets compressed, and then it buckles. And this creates a very good tactile feedback. As you press the key, the spring just buckles uh, and the key goes down. So it's a very positive feedback. And it's very loud, sorry. That's one of its downsides. I think the original ones might have even been louder than this, actually. And I, I get criticism if I try and type while I'm on a video call and so on, obviously. Um, they're very good, I like them. And you can take the key caps off and clean them and so on. So it works well. Unfortunately, just now and the, again, they will give up. Um, I think it's to do with muck getting under the keys or something. There's lots on the internet about washing them in deionized de water and leaving them for a week. This keyboard has the Z key going a bit mad. And if it wasn't for the fact that I've been coding stuff for GPS processing with X, Y, and Z coordinates, I wouldn't have minded quite so much, but I was getting really quite fed up with sort of bruising my finger pressing the Z key because I have to hit it hard. Um, and I've tried taking the keycap off and blowing in it and spraying it with ISO and so on, and it's, it's still playing up, so God knows why. So I'm a bit lazy. When this happened once before, I bought a new keyboard. It's not rocket science. And just solved the problem. And it's, I've had this for years, and it's finally giving up the ghost. I was also quite pleased, years ago, when I started using a Mac as my main machine, that they make a Mac layout version, which is what this is. And, again, you should be able to see, it's got the function keys all labelled correctly for Mac, it's got a command key, and the layout all works properly for a Mac. Um, all little things like, is the tilde in the right place and everything, and it, it just drives me mad when that doesn't work. Um, unfortunately, this time, they don't have any Mac ones in stock, and I don't know why, so I couldn't order a Mac one. I ordered a PC one, and thought, I'll give it a try, and no, I just can't cope. I'm so used to this keyboard. I mean, yes, I would get used to it eventually, but really, I'd rather not. Let's just stick with what I know. So, not being able to order one, I decided to try something different. So, unboxing video. I got one of these. A Keytron K10 Pro made in China, never heard of it before, um, 110 quid, so comparable price to the uh, IBM Model M, and uh, it comes in a Mac layout by default, and it has apparently extra key tops to customise it and change it to a PC one if you want, so let's have a look. That's a bit of foam on top. Now this shows that it's got these these uh, keys in. Now apparently it's got brown keys and you can get red keys and you can actually pull these out and swap them. They've got pins in the bottom. It says you can't put the blue, blue ones in. And apparently the different key colours have different tactile feedback. And from what I read the brown ones seem like they might be better. For me, anyway. Um, there's a quick start guide, which looks fun. I will look into it. It explains various bits about it, including how to change the key tops for Windows users. Won't be needing that. Let's look, let's look at the keyboard itself. The first thing you'll notice is it doesn't have a wire. My other one was USB. And I do like a wired keyboard. Um, I don't like having to change batteries or recharge things. And bloody hell, it's heavy. That's noticeable. But the good news is, it does Bluetooth and USB-C. I've lost my pen knife. It does USB-C, so I can use it wired. And we've got a 
caps. That sounds like that. Comes with some key, key, key caps. Comes with a thing there that looks like it's for taking the key cap off. Comes with a thing here that I think is for taking out the whole switch. Um, Allen key, uh, screwdriver. So it's got all the bits to dismantle it and do whatever shit you want with it, which is rather nice. Uh, key caps here with variations like a euro symbol on a key. Um, Bluetooth symbol on the two key. You've not seen that before. That's interesting. I've got euro on the two here, and there's an option for euro on the three. I'll, I'll work out what my Mac does and make sure I've got the right key caps. But I've got options, which is nice. And there's some more, some more ones here. Ah, optional black keys for certain things. I'm not sure why I want black keys. Uh, escape in black. I actually quite like the red escape key there. Nice, nice, solid. Um, what's it like to use? Well, obviously I'll try it on the computer in a moment, but still a bit noisy. Not as noisy as the uh, Model M, which is nice. Um, As you can see, I'm not touch typist, not that that holds me back much. It's got all the white function keys. It's also got circle, triangle, square, and start. I have no idea what I'm going to do with those. Uh, it looks like it's got all the keys in the right place for a Mac. I think at this point, the best thing to do is for me to try it. It's, it's nice and solid and heavy. I'm, I'm, I'm quite impressed with that. It's not going to move about. That's good. So, so far, I'm of the view that that is going to work. Well, we'll see.